Okay, I actually put this back on the seat and guide machine because I forgot to cut the exhaust seat. Um, you could tell the exhaust valve job's worn out. We'll talk about this when I get to that stage. But anyway, here you can see the short side now. It's got its shape. It's a little blindingly light. Sorry about that. But you do notice, and hopefully the light's not capturing it. Or it probably is. Yeah, you can see right there. You can see this ridge right here. I leave this all the way around. So I'm only doing the apex, really. I'm just bringing it width. And it looks pretty good. It's got a nice curve to it. This side always looks a little goofy until you look at it from the other side. In other words, if you look down from the intake port, you can tell what's going on there. But I leave a little step there. Yeah, you can see it there. So you can tell where I stopped grinding because now what I'll do is I'll go in with my um, reverse taper and that's when I'll blend this part together. So I do this first and the short side, just getting the apex right. If I have to lay it back, that's when I'm doing this. But I leave this little gap because when I go back, then I can make it blend into the valve job correctly. And I'll show that right now. Okay, now you can see I rolled it into the short side. It's nice and rounded. This is where your finger comes into play. You're going to feel that. No ridges, and that's what you want to feel. It's nice, smooth. And then you can see it's blended into the valve job itself, the lower angles. Um, yeah, it's just, I'm not really trying to remove them. I'm just blending it in. Probably looks like I have, but I haven't. Uh, the seat's somewhere here, and then you've got your undercut, another undercut. So we're looking pretty good. At this point, you're done grinding the intake. From this point, all you have to do is make it look pretty if you want to. Um, so what I, this is the one I left off with, by the way. This is it. It's my reverse taper. Um, but if you want to make it look nice, all you got to do from this point is you use your, which some of you might be doing anyway, use a cross cut burr like this and to do that short side like some people do that. Um, but anyway, I'll use this to one step to clean it up. It's kind of like sanding a car. This makes it smoother. And then I'll go to this pink stones, like 24 grit. That'll be next. And then I'll... 60 grit on a cartridge roll. This is blue, so it's a ceramic. and get this from cylinder head abrasives. And finally, I'll finish it up with something like this, which is my flapper wheel with 60 grit on it, too. But I'm going to do that, and we're going to the exhaust. Okay, now I'm working on the exhaust. What I really did was just grind more on this side right here. So pretty much, I'm taking my burr, which is this one, my oval. I'm going over here, and I'm trying to hog out this corner here. And I'm starting to taper this guy, which doesn't look like I've done a very good job because I do a better job from the other side, which I'll show you in a minute. So essentially, grinding here first, taking out, getting a little bit of notch because the air wants to go that way. So I'm grinding here, blending into this. And then on this side, I'm just smoothing this up. So it's kind of squared off, which you can't see really good, but it's kind of squared. So I'm making it a little bit more round. I'm not really trying to make it bigger here. It's a bad idea. And then I'm taking the throat too, and I grind like this. So there's... A lot of radius here, very little radius here on this side for the throat. And the throat's like 88% of the valve. So anyway, there's that. I'm gonna flip it around and get the other side and show you what I do. Okay, here we are on this side of the exhaust port. What I do is I'll take the gasket and I gasket match, but I'm only doing the top side of the port. In other words, which the scrap line's pretty much gone. You can tell there's a little waves there we go. Mark it out, it makes it better. You can see I'm only scribing there. I don't bring it all the way down. Don't make it a solid oval, you'll ruin it. Uh, just don't do that. And this is the cylinder wall side. So this is the side that's gonna be the most. And you can tell how what I do with the guide. And it's really easier when you have a flame. Because what you'll do is you'll just grind in like this. And you're actually shaping that guide way better than trying to do it from the other side. Do the same thing here. And then eventually you'll still have to go back to your oval just to get right there and then rounding it off. It may not look the prettiest, but it's like a haircut. The beginning doesn't look as always as nice as the end. So there's that. Now I'm going to do the short side of it. And uh, yeah, we'll keep on. Here you have the short side of the exhaust port. And again, you're looking at the silhouette. You can see it right there. So what I'm going to do, this is the cylinder wall side. I'm actually going to drop that corner. So that radius that you see right through there, I'm going to get rid of that. Make it more squared there. But I am going to leave the radius there. Just trying to make it more uniform. You can tell it's kind of jagged. So make it more uniform here. Drop it down here. That's it. And then I'll roll around on the other side.
this is what it looks like when it's all done up. So now we have it done. I'm gonna kinda see, there we go. Got a little bit there, still got my corner radius here. Now I'm going to flip it up and do it from the other side so I can get the part back here. But it's got a nice radius. I actually did blend it in because on the exhaust side, I will blend in right with the seat when I'm doing the short side. So that's all blended in. You got a field test, nice and smooth radius. Looks good, feels good, you're good to go. Flip it over and then I'll be just about done. Okay, here's this view. Now as you can see, this is the cylinder wall side. And hopefully you get a better view of what's going on with that short side. Still got a little bit of radius there and less radius on this side. It looks like that. Now all I have to do is beautify it like I did the engine and wash it and I'll just clean it up really and then we're gonna flow it. Now, I know you're thinking, wait a minute, buddy. You didn't touch the chamber. The chamber is the most important part. Most times I would agree with you, except for if you look at this one, this is the top cut, there's no ledge. It's not leaving a ledge into the chamber at all. So since there's no ledge there, it looks like there is, but there's not, that's not gonna hurt flow. This roughness here, it ain't hurting flow. If you want to, for your own personal satisfaction, you could smooth this up. The only thing you can do is you can round this part of the spark plug where that notch is. However, in flow testing, I have seen zero gain in that. Before someone says hot spots, that spark plug will get hotter and cause pre-ignition long before this little chunk of aluminum here ever does. Now there is some spots here in the corner you might get rid of um, that goes in the chamber here, but there's really just not a ledge. So it may not look pretty, but it won't change flow a bit. Um, anyway, so there's that. Now, if it looked like this, this one's been dug in more, so you could see a ledge. That you need to get rid of, especially on this end. That you'd have to get rid of. But if the valve job's in right, and it just comes in, you're golden. You don't even have to mess with it. You don't have to worry about damage in your seat or anything. So I'm gonna beautify this, put it on the flow bench. All right, here's what it looks like when it's all beautied up. Well, it's probably not that beautiful compared to what some other people's work looks like. Like I said, I'm just trying to get this thing done so I can give you guys a video, but this doesn't look bad. I mean, it's pretty good. Um, yeah, it's what I would, if someone's wanting like a basic dot job, this is what it would look like. So it's not bad. As you can tell, I've rolled in. I still left one of the angles. Let me get there just so I can zoom. There's still one angle, then there's the uh, seat. So you can see the undercut and then you can see the seat angle. So I blend the bottom ones and just leave one. On the exhaust side, now I just blended. You can see that little spot there. There's a divot that's just dug into the casting there. I have no idea why, but uh, you don't try grinding that out. I mean, it, may, it makes the port look prettier, I guess. Visually, it doesn't do anything else. You can still see some areas around the guide too that I probably could have cleaned up a little bit better. But again, that's just make your eyes look better, not the flow better. This little spot in there, remember that's for the valve spring pocket. There's your finished exhaust port. And then we can show you from the other side. There's your finished intake port, which from this view, it doesn't look bad at all. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to put on my flow bench, 430 bore, and we'll see what it actually does. So let me get some valves and get the flow in this. Here are the valves I'm going to use. This is actually just a stock LS3 valve. This came out of a set of L92 heads I bought. Um, but anyway, it's a stock LS3 valve. It's how it is from GM. It's not even an aftermarket one at all. So it does already has a back cut. Yeah, there we go. But you can kind of see, that's not me putting it on there. It already has there. That's just a lap line from when I was doing the valve job. The exhaust valve, same thing. This is actually a used LS3 exhaust valve. And it just has a valve mark that's just been refaced, but that's it. There's no back cut on the exhaust. We'll just flow with these and see what happens. No special valves used. Probably what you guys would use if you were doing this. All right, guys, just got done flowing it, but I will show you something with this when I flow it here in a second because I can already hear the comments. But let me go ahead and show you the flow numbers real quick so you can get an idea. Now, I made things a little harder for you, but right here, and it's super, super small, and that's because I have a whole bunch of the LS heads that I'm using for the small block LS mule. And that dyno test is probably going to take place next week. But these are the stock flow numbers from the stock LS3 head, and these are what we just got done doing it so we can kind of get an idea. But anyway, the ones the numbers I care most about are four, six, and peak. But I'll go through um, from 400 on. At 400, the modified version does 266, but a stock one did 264. So not a whole lot of gain there. But if you look at the lower at 300, 223 versus 214, it did gain 10 CFM there. 
At five, it stopped, 296, we're now 303, so a little bit of gain there. At 550, modified 321, and now we're starting to see some gains. Because at 550 stock, it only went 309. So that's a huge gain. Now at 650, which I have to kind of skip down, the stock head only goes 317. At 650, 346. So almost 30 CFM gain from the work that's been done. And you can look at the numbers after it. It actually peaked about 356, and that's at one inch valve lift, which I can already hear some of you, I'm never gonna run a one inch valve lift on an LS. Um, maybe not, but it also tells how stable the port is. And I'm gonna show you that number actually occurred, that same 356 occurs a little bit after 650. And I'm gonna try to record it so you can see this, so you can see what I'm talking about on the flow. On the exhaust side, if we look at 400, stocks 181, this was down a little bit. This could be because this is a different head, but still it was down a little bit. There's no way to do that. This was also um, a little bit worse down low too. Um, got a bug that's bothering me. Um, but if we look at five, 198 to the 205. So really from 500 on, it's much better. At one inch, it was 235 versus a 216. Again, you're not thrown there. But at 600, most of you probably have a 600 lift cam. You go from 208 to 218. So it's getting about 10. And I didn't remove a whole lot of material from the exhaust. The valve job did a lot of that. And I actually think this might be with the valve job. Let me just switch on this sheet just to make sure. No, that's with the valve job. With the valve job, it actually went a bit better. 190 on the stock one. But anyway, point is, um, from 500 on, you're really gaining some with the porting on the exhaust. The thing about the flow bench, and I've been meaning to say this forever, you really cannot use it to tune an exhaust port, like porting that. I mean, it looks like you gain a lot of flow, but it doesn't necessarily translate to more power on the exhaust side. The intake side is a little bit different. The exhaust side, because of the heat and pressure coming out, is way different than a flow bench completely. Not that the intake stroke's all that close either, but it's far closer than the exhaust. We just cannot match the heat and um, pressures that are on the exhaust side versus the intake side on a flow bench. It just kind of gives you some kind of an understanding. But anyway, let me get to what I wanted to show you. Because I know some of you are like, well, I've seen so-and-so go 350. I'll go ahead and say, this isn't a bad head. This is a pretty good flow for what it is. The Lola flow is really, really good. I mean, I'm very happy with this. It'd be interesting to see how much more power it makes over the stock LS3. I've had some that have gone 370, but I put a 50 degree valve job on it. So that's a little bit different thing. I wouldn't necessarily do this for, for something like this to show you guys. And remember, all this is basic. I showed you all the stuff we did in the video. So it's not like super duper tough to do. I mean, it does take some time and definitely some patience, but it's doable. So these numbers are definitely doable for you average people. I promise, as long as you get the valve job done. Now, I wanted to show you this. So here we have it on the bench. I'm fixing to kick this on. Hopefully it doesn't freeze. Right now I have it set up at 600 valve lift. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, hopefully you can see the flow show up here. And I'm just gonna slowly open the valve and see where we get to. And you can see it eventually it'll back up. But let me go ahead and turn on the bench. So. That's how I turn on my bench. Um, I'm just gonna set this down here while I grab my earmuffs, sorry. You're about to look at a blank screen for just a second. And we're back, all right, I'm gonna turn it on. talking about it actually does 350 in the earlier but i only captured it uh 650 lift from this point on it's actually gained a little bit of flow it looks like it backs up at 675 that's where it loses its flow and it's not so much the port it's just the ls design that's where the 
on, when the, on the other bench, the Superflow, which I should point out, the flow numbers would be about 8 CFM higher if I floated on the Superflow, guaranteed. It, it's uniform. But on my Superflow bench, I've got the swirl meter. And if you were to watch what's happening right there, it's not because the port speeds are too fast. What happens is it's spinning. It's actually not spinning at all. Like there's no swirl at all until about that 675 point. And at that point, the valve opens enough where there's enough area for the air to actually start turning. And once it does, because it's turning, it's actually blocking part of the flow path. It backs up. But then as the valve opens more, it starts climbing back up again. That's just what LS heads do. Um, you could do things to kind of avoid that and make things better. But anyway, weird thing about it. So there's the results of it. You can do this. It just takes time and patience. Thanks for sticking around for the video. Guys, remember, I'm no Superman. I do not port cast iron heads. You guys take care.